Okay, in, in 1989, I was elected to serve at our international administration. Yeah. And the, uh, the Western Ukraine, I have just uh, was told this morning that things are pretty normal there. And uh, uh, except the people are frightened for all and they, they have asked for prayers. But the reality in Eastern Ukraine is, um, is different. The priests who have been serving there, like Crimea, they were they were threatened. One priest was abducted, at least one that we know of, and uh, he has since been released. The uh, major archbishop has been uh, encouraging the priests there with the difficulties that they're facing because there are new uh, accusations that are that are false and that are you, but the very reminiscent of what happened in the 1940s and 50s calling the priests of the Greek Catholic Church uh, Vatican spies for instance implements of something dangerous to the to the Russian reality and that's absurd but they have returned to those kinds of accusations you can't call them communists. They claim to be over that. <laughs> um, the only reality is that you're dealing with the same people who have changed their colors only, you know, in, in some mindsets. But um, the, it is still a threat to the mentality because they're afraid of foreign powers. And uh, if we are connected to the Vatican, and we are, then that that's like a fear of a foreign power right there. Fear of the West. Um, the whole nervousness is over, over Ukraine is probably because Ukraine was thinking about joining NATO and that would have put NATO right at their border of Russia. And they don't, don't like that idea at all. In, in 1989, I was elected to serve at our international administration based in Rome, Italy. And three weeks after I began that service, the Berlin Wall came down. And we were very aware that this could affect our sisters who were in countries that where religious life was suppressed. And indeed, um, by mid-December, we began to get calls from Ukraine saying that our sisters had begun to be able to uh, rise up a little bit, to dare to put on habits and go to public events. And uh, we knew this was the beginning of a, of a major change. Well, interestingly enough, the sisters were, were forced into the underground in uh, around 1947. And then they, that release did not happen until um, 1990, that they could be seen as a legal reality within the country of Ukraine. So they then began to uh, organize, and, and this is why I was in Ukraine already 25 times, to help uh, restore religious life, to develop communities, to de find buildings, to struggle with authorities, to get rightful properties returned to the community. And in some cases that happened, in some cases it didn't. This is one of the convents that was taken away from us, and then we, uh, this lady helped us to struggle to get it back from the government. And in, it's since been renovated as a convent again. But two weeks ago, a Russian official threatened to delegalize the Greek Catholic churches once again. And that signaled, uh, you know, the possibility of persecution. They know that the Greek Catholic Church is really at the heart of um, spurring on the love for Ukraine and the protection of their rights within the country. And so uh, it did enter very quickly into the mindset of the Russians to begin to punish it again.